guys, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing from a messy desk. Um, so I got three things for you today. First, I'm going to give you a real quick Ray Roberts report. I needed to go up today to, to Sanger to see the guys at Classic Fiberglass to get something fixed, which I'm going to talk about. And they're a mile and a half from the ramp of Ray Roberts. I know a lot of you guys are going to be fishing the Texas team. TTO, Texas, whatever it is, up there this weekend. And I know you'll get to practice tomorrow. I'll get this up, I hope, tonight which would be a lot more helpful for you guys if I can, which I'm going to try to. But I did splash the boat in up there today and stayed in the marina. I just had an issue with a graph I wanted to check out and needed to be in the water. And um, what I'll tell you is water's cooled off a bunch from what it was for the bass temps, per what everybody told me the bass temps. Water's 63 and a half, 63.2 to right at 64 degrees in that marina. North wind was howling in there. It was pretty churned up. Uh, I made just a little pass on the trolling motor looking with this, messing with this graph. And all I saw up shallow were two little bucks and a bunch of really nice carp. So uh, with the rain coming that we're supposed to get in the next day or two, I would suspect this is going to be more of a bass fishing tournament than a sight fishing tournament. But that's just my two cents. I'm sure somebody will find some big fish on the nest. But thought I'd share that with you just for my observations. And, you guys know you can get information as long as it's from a public forum, and this is, in fact, a public forum. So, uh, Next. So if you haven't seen, I've done two prop videos. I've gotten great feedback from them. And I told you guys that I'm doing these prop videos so that I can be informed and understand props because i got a special guest coming up. And I had announced who that is, and I'm going to tell you all who it is tonight. Uh, so... And there's been a bunch of speculation about who this would be, especially on some of the GoFast Facebook forums. And look, there's some great prop guys around the country. Great prop guys. And I, there's a good chance I'm going to circle back and talk to some of those guys as we work through this process to get their take on some of this. But most prop guys don't own their own lake and, and don't have access to any boat basically they want. And any prop they want and any lower unit they want that mercury makes so i reached out and i now have permission because we were we had to get it through their media department i got permission now to talk to nick peterson and nick's title is performance propeller manager for mercury racing so this guy knows his propellers they got some great videos on the mercury racing but they're not as technical as what I want to get into. So I've already, Nick's seen my first two videos. I'm working on the third video. I hope to have that to you guys next week. And then the following week, he and I are going to sit down and talk. Now, you guys have submitted some great questions to me. I've already forwarded them to him so he knows kind of what we want to talk about. But again, if you have questions about props, and, and, and let, me, let me preface this. I've had a couple guys say, uh, what's the best prop for a Mercury, you know, 200 on an 18 foot, you know, 1996 champion? That's not the kind of questions we're going to be able to ask him. We need to have more prop understanding questions. I mean, I can't get that specific or it'd be a 10 hour video because I've had that many people ask me that kind of stuff. But if you've got more general questions about prop structure, how props are built, what they're made out of, what performs best on what style boat, please share those with me. You can do it in the comments below. You can do it on any one of my prop videos, or you can email me at kinsmithfishing at outlook.com or at my Instagram, kinsmithfishing2.0. Uh, any way you want to reach out to me, I will get any of those questions that he can answer for us posted up. So, or posted to him and, and on the video. Okay, last thing. Uh, well, no, matter of fact, one more thing, three things, two more things. Uh, don't forget Bass Champs this weekend at LBJ. There's $4,000 in spark money up for grabs. And remember, because so many of you Central Region guys are in co-ops and couldn't become spark customers, we created Spark Fishing. It's basically an affiliate program, 75 bucks a year. Only you or your partner have to join. And you can win all the money in the Spark tournaments, in the Bass Champs divisional tournaments, and the Bass Champs championship. The big bass tournaments we got going on across nine lakes and the share lunker money too. So all you got to do is sign up to Spark Fishing. You can do it at www.sparkfishing.com and uh, join the team and you're eligible for all that money. And we've already given a bunch of money away and we're going to give a bunch more money away. Okay, last thing. So the reason I went to Classic Fiberglass today, 
I pulled up several months ago on my, apparently, on my uh, trailer crooked, and I creased one of my bunks with the, the, the bow of my boat or the, the, the V on the bottom of my boat. And apparently I did it so badly, it split the carpet open. And so the carpet kind of got splayed open. And then every time I ran over it, it got worse and worse to finally, I hate admitting I did this, but I took a roll of electric tape and I take that carpet down, but it's been like that for quite some time. And, um, it's, it's time for me to part ways with that Ranger and I'm not going to sell a boat that's got any problem with it. So I care. And by the way, uh, the boat sold. So don't worry about that. If you're, if you're interested in it, I'm sorry. Somebody spoke for that boat over a year ago, but, uh, I, I carried it up there and the guys did this. I'm stunned and I'm not going to quote what they priced it at because they'll quote you a similar, a similar price, but you know, you can do this on your own. And that's why I'm posting this video. If you want to either replace the bunks or just replace the carpet on your bunks, it's a simple procedure. There's two really, three really, really good tips in here that they suggested. Um, but I wanted to show you how they did it. You can do this just dropping your boat in the water at the lake down there. Uh, the downside to that is when you pull it out, the carpet's going to be wet. And one of their tips, the carpet probably doesn't need to be wet real soon afterwards. But anyway, uh, I just thought this was interesting in, in the process they did to do this. And then they suggested something that a, a boat maker does that I didn't know anybody did. Um, and you'll see what we're talking about right here. So let's go to that video. Hey guys, welcome back to Classic Fiberglass. So uh, I pulled up on my trailer at a funky angle. Uh, in, a, in a current one day and actually the, the the center line of my boat creased and cut the carpet on my bunk. So you can see there sits my trailer and this is something you can do yourself. Uh, just, I mean obviously you can just carry it to the lake and drop the, water, the boat off. I was close by here and the key to this is you got to have the carpet to do this with. So let me show you what we're doing over here. Chris and the guys. So. You were talking about probably how I cut that, Chris. Yeah, you came on and you know, you got a chine that come in here. You can see the grooves where it's coming in and, and cutting it. And the reason it does that is because it starts out so thin because you're the carpet's so matted down. I don't know what uh weight carpet ranger uses on their bunks, uh, but it's not very good. And it's just a two by six under. Yeah, it's just a standard two by six underneath it. Yeah, so you can see, I mean it's forty five. To just in case you get too low but like I say that's what it is and obviously if you don't you've done it two or three times so mm -hmm. uh, you know and it doesn't take much to move over you know the chine may have to sit right here and if you know you're in the wind or something or your boats too far in the trailer you may get it over there you know before it gets it's up and starts adjusting straight and then it'll slide back over but yeah that's just a pretty standard issue you can see how basically paper thin that stuff is now you know, just because that's where the weight of the boat sits. The, the most weight of the boat sits back there at the very tail end of it with the motor and everything. And it, does anybody do anything different than that that you know of? Bascat does. Bascat actually puts a, a whole layer of uh, carpet underneath that. And it's usually, you'll a lot of times you'll pull it off and it may be red or blue. It's just scrap carpet they use that they staple down there. And then they put their good carpet over. And Bascat uses 20, 20 or 24 ounce carpet on... Uh, uh, he is, he is a basket guy. If y'all ain't figured that out, <laughs> yeah, they do it right though, and you're not going to have that same stuff on there. But but great point. If a guy does this himself, which is what you guys are doing, if you're going to replace your carpet on your bunks, there's no reason not to double strip it. I mean, carpet's not that expensive. No, it's not. Uh, it's just typical. I mean, now with wood being as expensive as it is, we may have to change thought on it. But typically, it takes us longer labor-wise to take this piece of carpet off and strip all the staples out then we can just i mean more money involved in it than just buying a brand new piece of wood so we normally just put new pieces of wood on it even though the wood is maybe still good uh but the carpet's not but you know we may have to now reconsider that because i mean that's like a 35 five dollar piece of wood now mm -hmm. you know where before it was like 14 you yep. know and uh flip it over and let's look at how it's stapled on there do you see they just took a staple gun and went right up the middle of it right at least they use stainless staples where some people some of the companies don't but uh God, i would have thought about that you definitely if you're doing this yourself you want to use stainless staples yes and and, and we also when we do our bunks which uh i don't believe they do uh we glue ours so we come through there and spray glue on them wrap them and then we come back on the seam and and uh and and 
do the do the staples. On Why it. do you glue? To me, it just helps it last longer because whenever you get stuff like this, if it's loose, that's what's going to cause it to tear. Yeah. What you guys didn't see, by the way, is I had literally wrapped electric tape around that to hold it down so that I wasn't just running up on wood on there. Yeah, but so when it's loose, if you take your boat and you run on there and it wants to start folding up, that's when it's going to cut it. But if it's glued down and it's tight, you're just basically going to slide off of it and it's not going to give that same effect. So uh, that's just something we've always done is glued them and... Uh, I mean, we don't put extra pad underneath them when we're typically just replacing bunks because Bass Cat's the only company that does that. You know? I think I would now, based on what we're seeing. So uh, it, when we came up here the other day, I had several guys ask me, and I'm going to mess the name up, but they were asking about, I asked you about using nylon bunks, and you said that you didn't like them because they're, why? Well, they tear the bottom of the boat up. So they everybody, do chew it up. Yeah, everybody says you know hey it just helps me load and unload well i mean i've never had a problem loading a bass boat on a trailer you right know, some bigger ones maybe you do but uh what it does is a lot of them will put those nylon strips i mean they'll put nylon strips straight on top of this bunk well now in, instead of having a six inch footprint now you've got a four inch footprint and you've got a three thousand pound boat sitting on it and just sliding on and off there it just tears it just tears the gel coat so you see it tearing them up oh yeah and uh i mean all the time and you know, I, I had a guy, I think it wasn't but about two months ago, bring his big bay boat. He had just put those, uh, basically it's like a composite plank, like what they put on a, a deck outside at yep, a, a yep. boat thing. And uh, But it was already chewing into his boat. He hadn't had them on maybe, uh, he hadn't had them on there maybe six weeks. So what we ended up doing on his, pulling the boat off the trailer, it was just a two by four. And we just carpeted, we just carpeted that bunk or that, that composite there so now he's never going to rot but now he's got the protection of the carpet so it's not chewing up the boat yeah. all right so they just went up with a pair of channel locks and just popping the carpet out off comes the carpet Say it again, I don't think we could hear what it was. It's a DAP weld wood. Uh, so uh, it's a contact adhesive from um, that they use on vinyl tops. Now you can buy the same DAP weld wood you can buy at Home Depot, but it's a brushless form of it. You can, if you start spraying it out of there, it gets all spider webby and stuff. And uh, it, it'll, it'll still work and spray out of a, out of a gun like that, but it's... Uh, that's, you said that's what you use when you put carpet on a boat? Yeah, yeah, it's called DAP, D-A-P weld wood. Okay. Uh, and ours just happens to be the sprayable uh, version of it. But if a guy's doing a do it at home, you can do it just yeah. to brush on. Yeah, you can buy it at uh, Home Depot. A lot of people just brush it on. You just you use a lot more doing it that way. That's a pretty technical process. How to press that wood down? Mm -hmm. That's right. It took years I'm, to learn that technique. I'm not sure I could walk <laughs> the length of it. Is that so it'll fold. Yeah. So you'll you'll see how it folds over. So what he's done is he's creased it on both ends, right at the end of the bunk. So he can make it fold. Oh, didn't spray the side yet. Okay. Put some more glue on it. Do you have to do that 45 or is, if you're replacing them? You're <coughs> we do if they already have it on there. It's not. It's just kind of an ease up on there. You know, <coughs> you know just kind of, instead of it being a blunt force there, you're, mm -hmm. you're kind of easing up on it.
surprised at the weights of Ray Roberts? No, I thought they'd be a little higher. Number two. Were they, were they just a lot of them pre-spawns too? Yeah. Yeah, this late is probably. It's Texoma late. Oh, a month behind normal or a month behind everything else? A month behind normal. I mean, I caught them on beds in June. So. In June? Yep. I know, like, I think three or four of the top 20 came out of the ring, out of the back of the ring. I don't know some jacks that come out of sand. And That's the rabbit hole I went down on this prop video is a torque master versus a sport. Master. Well, and, and I mean, you just, most of our boats won't lift a won't lift a sport master. You, know, you can't get them out of the water to make them perform. might sneak to the lake if I do don't tell Sarah okay so again they they so always make sure you use stainless steel staples I wouldn't have even thought about that but that's silly I wouldn't have thought about it he said glue them down and that makes sense you could see on mine how that carpet was moving around and that's part of why it split and I got to tell you um, I really like the idea of double carpet in the bunkers now double carpeting the bunk. Now we didn't do that today, but if I ever redo a bunk, uh, I will re I will double carpet all of them. So uh, he didn't quote that in my price, which would have been, you know, that much more carpet price and that carpet's not cheap. But um, if you're going to do it yourself, that's just something you might think about. And it sounds like it'll be more durable long term doing that. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, golly, we got a bunch of finally going to get to go fishing. We're going to fish Cedar Creek this weekend practice. We got Cedar Creek uh, bass champs the following weekend where there'll be another bunch of spark money up for grabs and then we're finally going to get back down to Rayburn here sometime in the next couple of weeks so besides the prop videos coming we're going to finally get some fishing videos up for you guys too which I'm excited I hadn't been on the water in several several weeks other than splashing it in the water for 15 minutes this afternoon so thanks for tuning in thanks for sticking with me while we've been off the water here but uh, we're going to get back to fishing here real quick thanks guys we'll see you soon